Hi. When we last left our intrepid adventurer, he was uh, caught up with this IBM compatible, the world's first IBM compatible, compact, portable machine from the uh, early 80s and managed to get the motherboard up and working and uh, determined that the power supply was shot. We weren't getting any negative rails whatsoever, which actually stopped the uh, main processor from booting up because there is a logic output from this uh, comparator circuit around here that obviously uh, checks the rails on all the voltages. There's plus 12, there's 5, there's minus 12 and minus 5 at least, I think. And they're all uh, obviously summed together and gives a signal good output and it was giving a signal bad output. And that was going to the CPU, holding in reset, stopping the machine from starting up. But once we powered the motherboard up with an external uh, power supply and uh, bodged in that power good signal, the motherboard came to life and we were able to get video out of it. It still worked. So let's get back to this uh, power supply here, this pesky little power supply. reason we didn't look at it last time is because, well, look at it. It... It, look, it's like you can't even get in there to read or measure half of the parts. It's all higgledy-piggledy. It's all over the shop. It's just a really horrible layout to work on. And of course, Murphy uh, ensured that any trace that you try to, uh, you know, a trace on here, it's going to go through to the top layer where you can't damn well see anything. So... Yeah, real pain in the butt. Anyway, we're going to solve our minus 5 volt and minus 12 volt issue on here. So let's take a closer look. By the way, we're going to be using the new uh, EEV Blog BM786 multimeter, available exclusively on the EEV Blog, available on the store as of today. I just got stock in, so uh, yeah. Anyway, check that out. Um, so what we've got here is, uh, well, obviously a switch in power supply, because it tells you it's made in the United States of America, SMPS switch mode power supply. This is obviously the primary side here. We've got 240 volt uh, mains or one, that 110 Yankee rubbish uh, coming in here. And uh, then we've got, oh yeah, a couple of little bridge rectifiers too bridge rectifiers. Anyway, we've got a bridge rectifier down there. Then it just rectifies the input mains. We've got our high voltage uh, caps here. And then um, this um, contraption, which looks like a giant inductor. It's not. This is actually your switch mode uh, transformer. You can probably see deep down in there, there's some wires running off there. So this is like, it's really ugly. They're just like hand wired over to points down in there, 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 and all over the shop. Um, anyway, so yeah, essentially uh, primary side here, and uh, oh, we've got a made in Britain, made in Great Britain, thank you very much, a 2N6545 for those playing along at home. Anyway, um, obviously primary side, and obviously the rest of this is secondary side, with this is our uh, isolation transformer. Uh, and the taps for this thing are right down in there, some, like secondary. Uh, taps. So these are all of our secondary uh, regulation capacitors. Now we're basically just looking at the uh, topology, uh, basically, because we've already gone over this board. We've done the smell test. We've done the visual test to look for, you know, a blow and stuff or dry joints, you know, things like that. And we did actually uh, detect a few dodgy joints on the LM338K, but that's actually working because this is actually, this is an adjustable voltage regulator. Here's the data sheet. So this is going to be for either the uh, plus 5 volt or the plus 12 volt uh, rail so obviously right off the bat and because look at the size of the heatsink on this thing um, it's well it's basically the largest one on the board here so that's telling us that we're well we've got a linear voltage regulator so even though this is a switch mode uh, power supply we're looking at possibly um, not any active switch mode regulation on the secondary side over here. We've got a linear regulator. So what that points to is just a simple uh, bridge rectifier or you know a diode halfway from the uh, secondary side and then just going into the caps and then we've just got linear regulators. Now there's another device down in here. You know you can't get in here to read any of this stuff. It's ridiculous. Anyway now these two here on uh, small more heat sinks. These are uh, diodes. I'm not sure if they're primary or secondary, but they got CR on them, and I can see that's an actual uh, a diode in there. Trust me about that. Here's our mains coming in over here. We've got our bridge rectifiers going to our main filter caps here, and then obviously, yeah, this is this is all the connections for the uh, primary side 
of the transformer there. And then we're gonna have some optocoupler feedback somewhere. There they are, optocouplers. Uh, they look weird, but uh, yep, old school uh, package optocouplers there. So I've got some feedback, but I don't necessarily think it's doing much in terms of uh, secondary regulation. As I said, we've got that linear regulator there. So anyway, uh, primary side and then secondary side here, and we've got some extra stuff in here. So yep, this diode over here is on the uh, secondary side, and the other diode on the heat sink here also on the secondary side. And so what we're looking for probably is like a classic culprit in these is our blown rectifier diodes. Um, yeah, I have to link in the, uh, it was the HP oscilloscope uh, repair where we had a really remarkable and really elusive uh, thermal fault in, so oh no, spoiler alert. No, 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 follow along, I'll link it in. Anyway, interesting. Now, my first suspect would be a uh, diode in there somewhere. So um, we'll just check uh, these two biggies and then, well, I can see a couple of diodes really deep down in there. I don't know how I'm gonna get down and measure a couple of those. We'll have to flip it over and measure from the bottom. Man, cross our fingers we don't get the wrong pin. Um, measuring diodes in circuit, not always uh, the best thing. The one over here is here, so 0.07 volts, 0.072, aha, uh -huh. well, that could be low in circuit impedance, 0.03, nah, okay, that may be uh, low in circuit impedance, we can go over and measure our ohms, but I suspect, so yeah, 67, one way, Yep, so they're not shorted, but that doesn't indicate that they're a dead ski. So um, what we're looking for, of course, is not a uh, shorted diode because we're measuring like nothing. I believe there was like nothing on those rails. So it wasn't popping any caps, it wasn't doing anything. So if the diode was shorted, we might be in a spot of bother. Um, you know, it could blow something up or, you know, it's gonna cause issues. So I would suspect that probably, like more than likely, like a diode's gone open somewhere. So a bit of light to get down in there. And what do we got? Aha, 7912. There you go, negative, that's our negative 12 volt regulator. Yep, that's not much of a heatsink, is it? Uh, for your negative uh, minus 12. So yeah, but probably not. Like for the minus 12 volts, it'd be like for RS-232 or something. You wouldn't really need it uh, for much. Hence the uh, tiny heatsink. But there's another device on the other side in there, which I, oh, I can't. Yeah. So some people are wondering why we can't uh, measure those diodes. Uh -huh. Are they short or are they open or whatever? Well, look at these big ass resistors down in here. They're probably uh, bleed resistors directly across um, these caps here. These are very common. They discharge the caps very quickly if you turn the uh, supply off. So it's a regular half wave uh, rectifier. And then you've got a resistor in there. You've got the couple of ohms in the uh, secondary side turn in here. Plus, you know, however, you know, they might be, you know, a couple of hundred ohms down there. So effectively, um, either way you're measuring the diode, you've effectively got like maybe, you know, a hundred or a couple of hundred ohms in parallel with your diode. And yeah, that doesn't really let you measure the diode in circuit. You'd probably have to take these out to uh, measure them, but that would be a red herring because I know they're not associated with this. And I can't really film down there, but I was able to uh, get in with a uh, magnifying loop. I get in there, tongue at the right angle, with the light at the right angle, and that's a 7905. Uh, so, bingo, there's our minus five and minus 12 volt regulators on the one heatsink. So hopefully you can see the cramped area I've got to work with. Anyway, I can see two diodes down there. One is horizontal, and the other is tucked under that white gunk between the uh, white silicon between the capacitors there and that one's a vertical jobby that looks bigger so i'd say the uh bigger one is probably for the, like the minus 12. okay so what we've got three pins there three pins there and the center pin on uh, both of those is going to be the input well any uh 79 series uh voltage reg and the one on this uh the one sorry this is the 12 volt this is the 5 volt so this one ground over here should be ground, and certainly 
It is. And then, of course, the trace goes around there to match this one. That's ground, OK? So I can't remember which pin is our negative 5 volts, but we can find that. There it is. There's our negative 5 volts. And our negative 12 volts will be... There you go. There's our negative 12. Uh, because the 5 volts is almost certainly fed from the 12 volts. So that'd be my guess. Any but we can check that. So this is our 5 volt input here. Is that coming from our 12 volt output there? And yes, it is. <laughs> no wackers. So that explains why both rails are dead, because the if the we don't get our minus 12 volts out, then we're not going to get our minus 5 volts out. So both of those are cactus. So either we're not getting voltage to the 12 volt input or the 12 or the 7912 is dead. It could be either of those things. So our Dave Cad reverse engineering drawing is going to look something like this. We've got our transformer. We've got our secondary uh, tap. I think it's probably only going to be a uh, like half wave rectifier diode in there. And yes, you'll notice that I drew my capacitors backwards because I'm an absolute twit. Anyway, yeah, positive on the <laughs> on the ground side there because it's negative. So we're getting negative whatever voltage out of here. You know, a couple of volts above uh, 12 at least. Um, and then you've got to take into account ripple and all the rest of it. So so anyway, it's probably significantly higher. So we've got our 7912, and then that just powers the 7905, and then we'll have some uh, output uh, capacitance as well, also drawn in backwards. But I got that one right. I got that one right. And what you'd do as well is you'd go in there and you'd have a squiz around the magnifying loop to which I use my macro lens for my camera. Um, works great, times 10 macro lens, and uh, just look for any cracked joints or anything like that because that could be the problem may not actually be a component thing and with this uh, power good here with this LMR339 quad comparator what's going on here is a rough sketch um, we've got all the power supplies coming in there might be more than this it'll be plus 5 plus 12 minus 12 minus 5 should have drawn an extra one there but they all basically uh, go into uh, comparators here uh, there'll be a voltage reference on these pins so it's basically you know are they uh, like below a certain uh, spec so 5 volts you might put you know 4.75 it is, is it above that your typical 5% uh, then it gives okay I'm good and how they're doing this diode arrangement here you could do it like as an AND array or an OR array it depends how you actually configure it and how you configure the positive negative inputs here and how you actually uh, compare them but anyway basically the idea is that um, yeah this will give a output happy um, if all of the inputs here are above their thresholds that's it okay so let's follow the input pin of that regulator and the there's one diode here but it's got a little signal trace going out of it. I'm not sure if yeah, you should be able to see that. Um, so I'm not sure it's that. And the other big one here. So let's try this. So it should be a nope. And nopity dope. And nopity dope. Oh, that one's there we go. We've got a charge discharge thing. And so therefore, yes, it must be. <laughs> of course, it's the last one we check. Um, so yeah, so that large diode, that's the vertical one in there. That looks like a big uh, one watt uh, jobby. Let's go to diode e mode. That's all right. And the other way around is open. Okay, I'm just going to uh, power this sucker up here. Uh, I managed to, do, when I disconnected the fan, I managed to uh, get it out of the chassis. Just no touchy, all of this section here on the primary side. Here we go. It shouldn't need a uh, load. It should be okay. But, yeah, there's our 5-volt rail, 5.1. No worries. And that drains pretty quick with no load. They must have a uh, output uh, drain resistor on it. And we'll just verify plus 12. Yep, no worries. And that one drains, yep, quick too. Okay, I've got a clip in there going to our, our output of our transformer tap there. So let's have a look. So we should, um, it, well, it's, it'll give us AC, won't it? Nothing. Wow. Really? Nothing out of the transformer? In VFD mode on there. Where? 0.3? Out of the tap of the transformer so i yeah i've got circuit ground and that doesn't make sense at all and i can't actually um, show you it's too deep down in there but i can actually see that the uh point of the diode i'm probing actually goes over to um the pin on the transformer so uh, what the ah you're not gonna believe it 
please and the answers in the comments down below i found it <laughs> i found the problem uh, yes <laughs> hang on i'll get that come out you bastard show yourself there's the ugly turd there it is can you see that orange wire down in there that is the transformer tap for the negative um the 12 volts and negative 5 volt rail it was <laughs> it's like it's come off so like i don't know is this just like because this is just flapping around in the breeze i think this has just vibrated loose over the years um you know the fan it's got a you know 240 volt fan on there i'm not sure how much this thing's going to vibrate but that's what it was <laughs> was so tracing down all that well there could be something wrong with the circuitry i, I don't know but um yeah the bloody wire unbelievable wow could have really chased a red herring down a rabbit hole there um just for the sake of a wire because like you know like you see it for, look like for all the world that it was connected down to that point but it damn well wasn't unbelievable no wonder we'll get enough all out of it there it is there can't quite see it is that a single strand yeah that's a single strand jobby i think it's just broken off from the board unbelievable there's not much le <laughs> length left on that got to attempt to get in there and strip that this is a real dog the hell kind of insulation is on there unbelievable that was a real dog to get that out let me tell you so yeah i gotta uh Get in there with the needle nose pliers and feed that back down. Yeah, it's not easy to get these damn connectors out either. Um, so I might have to take the whole chassis over or bring the soldering iron over to here. Ugh. So here's the uh, tap here, these two pins. So this one uh, goes to ground, obviously, and this one goes over to our diode over here like this. There'll be uh, filter caps in there and then, or somewhere, and uh, then that'll go directly into over to there. Um, and that's the input to our negative 12 volt regulator. So I've cleaned out that hole So I should be able to feed in the wire from the top um, And hold my tongue at the right angle and hopefully it'll get through and then hold it With your finger on the other side and then solder from this side because you don't want to be soldering from the top This is just ridiculous. Seriously. You got no idea. It's right back under the Transformer Sorry, I can't show. Oi, did I get it? I think I might have got it. Hang on, stay in there, you bastard. I think it's going to stay in there because it's a single core, so it's stiff as. Oh, yeah, yeah, good enough for Australia. Yep, there we go. You can see something there. So let's solder that back. It's got enough length on there. She'll be right. Flow that through, and we're good to go. All right, always give it a tug afterwards just to make sure yep yep tug test complete i think we're good to go all right let's power this thing up uh so this probably hasn't been powered up for quite some time look i don't know when it uh broke or how under what circumstances but obviously our negative 12 and negative 5 have, well i think have never powered up since i've had it so uh yeah it could blow something who knows release the magic uh smoke but anyway let's give it a bowl minus five yes Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So if our minus five works, that means our minus 12 works as well. Hello, minus 12. Let's do that again. Minus five. Minus uh, 12. There we go. I think, I think the I just moved my ground uh, probe. I don't think it was making loosey-goosey in the contacts. But there you go. Fixed. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I have absolutely no doubt that we'll be getting our uh, power good sitting out of here because but murphy um i might say that well something in the power good circuitry has failed as well but no look it's going to be doing <laughs> going to be doing its business there you go that would have been my last guess that was a wire tap on the secondary of the switching transformer um you don't normally get this because usually they go in via a connector of course um but this one no it's hardwired into the board but not only is it hardwired into the board it doesn't use any of that stranded rubbish it uses single core and of course uh the thing with single core is that if it gets uh vibration and flex and everything else um then it can you know it can break <laughs> off fairly easily that's why like uh, your high quality multimeter probes for example if we cut these apart these might be like you know a couple of hundred 
strands of wire, like the real good silicone uh, ones with the like the real super flexible ones. But basically, you know, regular uh, strand of wire might be you know seven strands of 0.1 millimeter or something like that. Uh, for example, and of course, you know, it gives you a redundancy. It makes them reasonably flexible. But no, using the solid core wires on there causes us to come a gutsa. Wow, I'm, I'm actually glad it was that and just not, a, you know, which is the most common fault might be a, like an open um, diode or something like that, or even the regulator, really. Although, you know, usually diodes would fail before the regulators would. But yeah, I... <laughs> At least we got something interesting out of that. How long's this been going? 20 minutes at least. And we can actually measure out power good signal, which is pin two here. And there you go, it's five volts. Yep, I, we were getting zero before, weren't we? So the power good, so I have no doubt that this thing will now power up our motherboard over there. No wackers, but I've got to assemble it all in the case for it to do this. So that's really annoying. So that's not something I'm gonna do uh, for today's video. So yeah, I'm gonna have to like reassemble the whole thing and then you know see if the CRT works and all that. But you've already seen that the uh, motherboard works. We got video out of that and we knew, uh, we traced it down that it actually came from uh, the failed uh, power good on the power supply and that failed because our uh, negative 5 and negative 12 were gone but even if we have one of those rails go anyway that was simple but even simple ones can be interesting so hope you learned something and found that useful if you did please give it a big thumbs up as always discuss comment down below catch you next time but wait, hang on. <laughs> I just remembered that somebody, uh, the viewer, thank you very much, uh, sent me in the link to the schematic, which I had. I uh, got this a while back. Uh, forgot I had it, so that would have helped. Uh, anyway, let's go in and have a look. I believe it's the same one. It's the Compact Portable. This is the Portable Plus, but that's pretty much only. Uh, it has like a hard drive and some upgraded ROM or something like that. So anyway, Howard W. Sams and Co. Computer facts. And um, we'll see why this is uh, a Howard W. Sams and Co. Uh, is important in a minute. Printed in the United States of America. Oh, you can't see that. Printed in the United States of America. Anyway, um, so yeah, for those aficionados here, here's all the uh, digitally stuff. But we do have the power supply in here. Take a while pressing spacebar. There you go. Look, <laughs> nice, nice annotations on the schematic. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, anyway, uh, let's go down to the power supply. Um, that's the part that we want, and we do have it. Thank you very much. There you go. Um, beautiful, all on uh, one, uh, mostly on one sheet. Although I don't like how it sort of like goes off here. It's like, you know, all these like jump off like down here. It's like, oh, it's yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, and it, we do have an extra one over here, which just has then these letters come over here, and then these are the ones that actually go to the connectors over. here here but anyway as you can see mains in here we've got some chokety chokes we've got a full wave bridge rectifier then we've got our big mains filter caps they've got some big bleed resistors across there and uh, basically yeah this is all just uh, primary side switch in here and then it looks like it does have a feedback coil here because that's feeding back without opto isolation into there yeah and, uh, yeah and they've got little you know if you really want to go in there and analyze it they've got uh, scope shots but of course we didn't need the schematic we didn't need the uh, scope it was fairly easy but you know if we had to go in there and you know this diode here was you know something in here was this cap was bust or something you know like you might have some issues you might have to go in there and scope out waveforms and stuff uh, luckily we just had a broken wire so but yeah this is handy and of of course on the secondary uh, side and yep as I suspected here's our 12 volt LLM338K uh, I suspected that was the highest power one uh, and it was certainly and yep we've just got a single uh, half wave rectifier there um, there's no filter caps for that one so they must be on the other page yes they are there you go that's the 12 volt source um and as you can see yes it's got a 680 ohm resistor across here this one up here has got 233k two watt resistors there you go so that's why the voltage was bleeding down and that's why i'll show you in a sec um in fact let's go into this so if we zoom into here okay so we've got our 12 volt uh, regulator here no worries but this is the uh diode that we were uh these are the two diodes that we were measuring here and of course look this one here look here it is 68 ohms this is your loop right here so if you're trying to probe your diode here and here regardless of which way you put your probes you're essentially got 68 ohms here in series with whatever this coil is it's going to be 
you know, tens of ohms tops, right? So you got well under 100 ohms in parallel with the diode you're trying to measure. This is why you can come a gutsa trying to read uh, diodes in circuit like this. You might think, oh, it's measuring, you know, 50 ohms both ways or something, and it must be shorted. You know, it must have like a, or a highest impedance short out or something like that. Well, no, you've got to think about the rest of the circuit here and how there might be a bleed resistors like this in parallel. So, yep, that's what they've got here. Oh, sorry, I was getting carried away. I think this is the 5 volt C. Let's get... Let's go to the next page. <laughs> C, C, C. Yes, 5 volts here. That's it. Um, so, what, so there's no regulation for the 5 volts? Really? It looks like they've just got a big zener. If we look at that one, one up, I think we'll find that's a 5.1 volt zener. Yeah, couldn't get that readily, but yeah, oh, it's 5.6 volts. Uh, 5 watt general purpose voltage reference regulator diode. Well, that's a bit how you do it, isn't it? I mean, they go to the effort to use a, a proper linear reg up here for the 12 volt rail but for the 5 volt rail they've just got a lousy <laughs> a lousy zener in there oh that's terrible muriel anyway here's our uh, minus 12 and minus 5 and yep the minus 5 is connected just through to the minus 12 volt there and yep uh we've also got a 330 ohm 2 watt uh in parallel here so that's why you have a hard time measuring these diodes in circuit so now if we go check out our uh power good circuit so yep there you go there's our diode and gate there and uh yep uh, lm339 voltage regulator and this will be as i said it'll be coming so you've got plus 12 minus 5 minus 12 uh etc and then yeah got some resistivity dividers and then a voltage reference will be coming yep it even says reference over here voltage reference yep there it is 2.5 volt voltage reference tl431 classic for those playing along at home and then we've got some opto isolatories and stuff like that so there you go that is that is the schematic so that's exactly what uh we deduced it to be uh during the troubleshooting that you know it was just obvious this is what it was that it wasn't actually that it had linear regulation on the uh, secondary side and it wasn't doing any secondary side switch mode regulation now this is the interesting thing i posted this on twitter a photo fact standard notation schematic with circuit trace copyright howard w sams and co 1987 well apparently this dates from like the 60s or something we'll briefly look at this because it's kind of interesting so I posted this on uh, Twitter, and the tweeps, of course, came through. Uh, there's Scott, uh, DEFPOM, the SANS photo fact, the service manuals published by SAM. They did a lot of manuals for old CB and amateur radios in the 80s, uh, but they did manuals for other types of equipment too. And Peter, thank you very much, Bereng. You I'm butchering that pronunciation. Um, unlocking the component uh, PCB mystery. So I still don't quite understand it, but we've got an info thing, but it seems to be basically uh, putting annotation and stuff on uh, schematics and things like that. And here's a, I guess their uh, brochure. Now, photo fact helps you lick printed circuit board troubles in seconds. Exclusive new Sam Circy Trace features eliminate costly hunting for test points. No more maze to trace. No need to flip flop board, <laughs> which means, you know, turn it up and up, bottom to top, which is what we were doing, trying to trace out where the traces are going. Here's how Circy Trace works for you. All test points are clearly shown on the schematic and is plainly coded the test points are similarly coded on the printer circuit board so you instantly know are they um well I, like is it just like they take photos and so i don't actually know what the product actually is you know right for your free photo fact thing like september 1958 that is great right so this is like the late 50s um this circuit trace stuff and like it was still i was still using it in the 80s apparently um, so yeah, it was still a thing. Please leave it in the comments down below if you've used uh, Circy Trace or not. So yeah, I still don't know exactly like what they're actually selling here. Is it some sort of documentation camera then that links? How does it like? I I have no idea. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. And once again, if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time. Hello.